the question, how can our young people stay pure, maintain their purity, when all around us, we are struck with impure thoughts, impure mm -hmm. actions, mm -hmm. in your schoolyard. Mm -hmm. You see people talking about all kinds of things. Wait till you get to UC Mercedes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> You're going to see some stuff. I will tell you right now that there'll be young boys waiting for you to check in mm -hmm. with a target on your back. I'm giving you the real. Yeah, that's right. So how can you maintain what you would have been placed in you in a world that is saying that you can't do it? Mm -hmm. How can you do it? Yeah. See, purity is not popular. Following God is not popular. Uh -uh. Going to church is not popular. Reading the Bible is not popular. Mm -hmm. Believing in God is not popular. Yeah. So how can you, when the world is telling you all those things, and while the world is telling you that you cannot maintain purity, the world is also telling you that you're not worth anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're tearing you down. And we feed into it, and we look at it, and we adjust it, and we read all kinds of books. When I was a kid, they had those books by Donald Goins. Everybody mm -hmm. remember that? Uh, yeah. Uh, those pimp books. Yeah. You remember you read them? <laughs> well, you probably couldn't read because I was talking about Yeah, man. <laughs> they had those books. I refused to read them. Because what you put in your head will plant a seed in your heart and cause you to lean that way. Whatever you put in your head. Whatever you put in your head is going to translate into your behavior. Oh, yes. If you read something wrong and you keep reading it, pretty soon you think it's normal. The games you play. The games you play on video games. If you play all these killing games, killing becomes okay. Come on, come on. What you put in your head is what's going to determine which way you go. Who you listen to. It's going to determine what influences you. I've always told young people, I don't care. I don't think the issue is peer pressure. The issue is peer identity, who you choose to hang out with. Because who you choose to hang out with will identify what kind of person you're going to be. Rabbits run with rabbits. Turkeys run with turkeys. Eagles run with eagles. And if you uh, uh, are eagle and run with a turkey, pretty soon you're going to forget you're an eagle and think you're a turkey. You're going to try to gobble, and you can't do it. But the tur turkeys will take you in because they're happy that you're brought down to the level that they are. People are trying to bring you down when God is trying to bring you up. How can a young person maintain their purity? The co contemporary culture is opposed to the concepts and practices of purity and righteousness as a lifestyle choice. After all, that's what we're talking about. After all, this really this message is about lifestyle choices. And how to live to God's standard of right living and how to resist the influence of the world's standard of right living. The world says there's a way that they think is right. God says there's his standard. The Bible says that there's a way that seems right unto man, but the end of it is death. So if you listen to the world's standard of living, you're headed to destruction. The world keeps changing their standard. I remember there was a time when marriage was popular. Yes. That you couldn't wait to get married. Mm -hmm. A young girl couldn't wait to get married. Nowadays, they don't get married. Yeah, yeah. They're moving on another direction. Mm -hmm. And matter of fact, marriage is becoming almost an obsolete culture. They have changed the definition of marriage. Yes, they have. Mm -hmm. They say love who you want. Mm -hmm. Love anybody you want to love. Mm -hmm. That wouldn't go off standard. Mm -hmm. The world changes the standard, and you are susceptible to that because they're putting that in your head. And they say that you can love anybody you want to. Pretty soon they're going to say you can love anything you want to. Yeah. Next thing you know, you're going to have some dogs walking down the aisle with somebody getting married. <laughs> if you continue on that track, no tell them where you will go to. What is God's standard of purity? Because this is what we're talking about. You maintaining your purity in an impure world. I want to let you know the world did not start off impure. When God created, everything was pure, everything was balanced. The, and the lions wasn't killing the lambs. You never heard about anything praying on anything. All you saw was peace. All of a sudden, Adam and Eve decided they wanted to be grown. They wanted to declare their independence from God. They said, I want to be like God. And they were already like him because he had placed his image in them already. 
But what did they do? They said, I want to do something else. And they, they took of that fruit. Something as innocent as a piece of fruit. It wasn't a fruit that caused the sin. It was a disobedience. Yes. And it changed oh, yeah. the whole world. Yes, it did. The whole culture of the world was changed from peace and prosperity to death and destruction. Oh, yeah. That's what we're facing today. And the world is still on that track yeah. of trying to destroy young people's lives. Oh, but your lives are valuable. Oh, yes, it is. The psalmist opens this verse with a question. How? How can? And he's talking to the young. But it ain't only to the young, because I'm going to tell you, sometimes these young, these old people try to think they're younger than the young people. Uh, How can you old young people stay clean? I ain't talking about anybody in particular. Don't look at me. <laughs> Some of these young, these old people are trying to be as young. They're wearing heels and can barely walk. Oh. Me and women, me and old men. I just work an old man in some tight jeans. <laughs> trying to be young. Everybody want to stay young. But how can a young person maintain their purity? He opens this verse with a question. How can you stay pure? Your theme is reflective of this question. While the focus in this text is particularly about young people, it is applicable to all ages. The question is posed, how can? That tells us three things. First thing, the text tells you that it is possible to be pure. If you can ask how can, that means you can. That means there's a way to be pure. When the world tells you you can't be pure, the question comes in Psalms 119. He stopped right there in verse 9 and says, how can? In the old King James verse, says, how can a young man, woman, boy, or girl cleanse their way? Because they recognize that we do come in an impure way and we need to be cleaned up. Amen. So not only is it can, can you be pure, how can you get pure? Yes. If you're impure, no, don't have to impure. Don't be all despondent because you're saying it's all over for me. It's not over for you. If you've been impure before, all of us have been impure. Amen. I've been impure. Amen. And I'm not just talking sexually. I'm talking about your thought process and your acting process, your behavior process. Purity takes in everything that's about you. It's not, we always want to make it simply a moral issue, and it is a moral issue, because if you're immoral inside, it's going to act on the outside. But if you are impure, you can become pure. How can a young person become pure? He answers a question in Psalm 119. So the first question he says is, he lets you know that it is possible to be pure, Secondly, the text tells you there's a method to be pure. And finally, the text gives you the recipe to be pure. All right. That's all in Psalm 119, on, 9 through 16. So the first thing you've got to ask is, what is purity? Because the definitions in this world has changed so much. What used to be purity somewhere else might be, I don't know what the definition is, but God's standard of purity is cleanliness. That means being holy like he is. He wants you to be pure as when you were created. So he wants to bring you back to your true humanity, to how he created you. Because we're all subhuman in sin. We always say, well, I'm only human. No, we're subhuman. Because sin took away our divineness, our humanity, and made us something less than. But he wants to bring you back to where you are. So what is purity? Purity is freedom from contamination. It's freedom from foreign and inappropriate elements. It's a way to be made clean. Maintain means that you're able to stay that way. That's all in your type. And the means of it is that means how do you do it? What agency or how, what person can make you clean? Jesus told his disciples, you are clean through the words which I have spoken unto you. Right. So what he tells you is purity is God's standard. You are fighting a world system of standard that says you cannot be clean. They're, what they're telling you is that God is a liar. Mm -hmm. That God is not true. His word is not mm -hmm. true. They want to get you off of this point right here and not believing in God because then if you have no boundaries, there's no far telling how far you'll go. Mm -hmm. You ask some of the people that went into the drug lifestyle. They would tell you that they did things they never thought they would do. When they were little kids, they never thought about those things. Mm -hmm. You tell somebody who grew up and they wasn't stealing, but once they started stealing, they started stealing bigger and bigger things. They never thought they would end up in prison. I don't know anybody that plans on going to prison. I don't, I don't know anybody that plans on dying from drunk driving. 
I don't know anybody that plans on being killed at the age of 14, 15, and 16. I don't know anybody that planned those things. But if you stand astray away from where God is, there's no telling you. There's a way that seems right unto a person. It is. But the end of it is destruction. destruction. When you walk away from God, you're headed to destruction. So the scripture tells us that purity is God's standard. I also want to tell you that purity is a personal choice. Amen. It's just not gender specific. It's not only a man's choice, only a woman's choice. Yeah. A man must stay pure, that's God's standard, and God's standard for a woman to stay pure. In our culture, yeah. men can be impure, but they want a pure woman. <laughs> that's not what God says. You deserve a pure man just like he deserves a pure woman. Amen. Don't let somebody sell you short on who you are. Don't let somebody turn your value around. God's standard is purity. Purity is a personal choice. That means each individual can answer the question of how can I maintain my purity? How can I become clean and stay clean? Yes. And purity is possible. That means you can be victorious, a winner over what somebody's telling you. Mm -hmm. Young people maintaining their pure purity in this world. How can a young person become and maintain purity? It's right there in your text. If you write that, walk right down from verse 9. He says, how can a young person maintain their purity? He says, by obeying God's word. Mm -hmm. obeying God's word. There's no other prescription, no secret on how to maintain and stay clean. Mm -hmm. If you want to be clean, you got to ingest the word. Yes. If you want to be clean, you got to take in what God has given you. And if you want to stay clean, you got to be obedient to his word. Yes. So he says, number one, by being obedient. Uh -huh. Then he says, I've tried hard to find you. Don't let me wander. Don't wander. Oh, you know, one of the nature of sheep is that they wander if they don't have a shepherd. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know why? They can't see very far ahead of us. And we like people, we can't see the future. We don't know what's going on down the road. We can't even see around the corner when we leave here. All right, all right. But he said, don't let me wander from your word. Don't let me get off track. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I need to obey your word. I don't need to wander from it. They're going to tell you, why are you going to church? Why are you going to church? Why are you going to Bible study? Why are you going to choir practice? Yes. Why are you praise dancing? Why are you doing all that thing? Because you don't want to wander from where your foundations are. I mean, I get you to shout on this, but I'm telling you the truth. Amen. Somebody was shouting this anyway because of God's word. <laughs> he said, don't wander from God's word, from his presence. Yes. Mm -hmm. Why walk away from the almighty God, the God that created heaven and earth, the God that gives you life and breath and all things, the God that provides for you, the God that builds you up, the God that gives you provision, oh, yeah. the God that gives you a place to live, the God that gives you these red shirts that you wear that you didn't give me. <laughs> so I like those shirts. I like them on the back. God provided that through people. God provided you a pastor, a first lady, a grandmother, and if you didn't have somebody, He brought you around somebody that gave you a foundation. You ought to thank God. Don't let me wander from you, from your class. Don't let me wander from your teachings or your commands. How can you maintain, become and maintain purity? By keeping God's word in your heart. Your word have I hid. That means I put it deep down. I didn't make it surface. I put it deep down so it could grow. I hid it in my heart. What is my heart? The very center of my being. The very person who I am is my heart. It's not this little muscle that's beating here that we call a heart. That's a muscle. But it's way deep inside. It's who you are that when you leave here, that it goes back to God. Your word. Mm -hmm. Not the world's word, not Cleveland Prince's word, or anybody else's word. Your word have I hid in my heart. How do you say pure hide his word in your heart and you won't sin against him? How do you maintain and become and maintain purity? Praise him for his word. Oh, yes. You ought to give him the word of thanking God that he has given you oh, direction. Yes. Trust in the Lord yes. with all your heart. Yes. And don't lean to your own understanding. Yes. See, we want to follow our own mind, our own thoughts, and we go downhill, and then we fall down flat. We say, can you help me? Yes. Lord, I need you. Yes. In all your ways, in whatever you're doing. Yes. 
as a young person, as an old person, all your ways acknowledge him. And he will give direction. He'll give direction from his word. How can you? You need to praise him because he's good. You need to praise him for his love. You need to praise him because he has brought you this far. You need to praise him that one day, that one day you were born and he put you somewhere. And that he continues to provide for you right now. You're wearing the best of clothes. Yes. You eat the best food. Uh -huh. You have a grandfather you can lay your chest on. He mm. still wants you to put your head on his chest every now and then. <laughs> you have people that around you that love you and have picked you up. You ought to praise him for his word. Then you ought to recite his word. That means say it out loud. Yes. Remember when I was a kid, I used to be scared of dead people. <laughs> Damn. He sure is. I saw what you put in your Shame. mind. I saw those Dracula movies. And He's scared of dead people. I had my Albert Hitchcock to birds. And every now and then I could see a bunch of birds like it's scared. Because them birds were pecking out of everybody's eyes. I got nervous. See what you put in your mind. I used to run by graveyard. He did. I, I, was running by, I, I thought I was cool. I was going to the University of Santa Clara and walking all cool. Had my little derby hat on and my Stacey Adams shoes. Y'all don't know about that. And I get by the graveyard and I take my hat off and I was going. They wonder why I was so fast. I was running from the dead. I thought Dracula and the vultures and everything was going to get me. But I would recite out loud. Greater is he that is in me. And he that is in the world. Resist the devil. And he will flee from you. Submit first. Seek the Lord while yeah. he may be found. Don't worry about the devil. He's walking about as a roaring lion who will kick you in your body. But I can resist him. Steadfast in the faith. I will recite it out loud when I'm running by that graveyard. And any other stage I was in. Just recently I was in Cabo. And my jet ski overturned in the ocean. So y'all better be glad I'm here. Y'all must have been praying because here I am today. I had a life jacket on. But I still was scared to death. It turned over and I'm way out there. Stephanie couldn't see me. Nobody could see me and nobody was around me because the other jet skis went away. And I'm hanging on saying, help! You couldn't see me over the horizon. They didn't see this little black hand waving up there. I'm just hanging on and I started thinking, though the bills may roll, my soul is anchored Come on, wait. in the Lord. Oh, yeah. That kept me calm because I know in whom I believe. Yeah. And I'm persuaded that he's able to keep that which I have committed to him. Until I gave my life to him, it's his life. I don't want to drown in the ocean. I thought I was going to, I said, they ain't going to find me. Stephanie's going to go home and spend all that insurance money. <laughs> She's going to drive my Cadillac, sell my Ford Flex, decorate the house the way she wanted. Ain't nobody going to find me. But my soul, my soul is anchored in the Lord. We thank him for his revenge. So I stood out there, it took about 10 minutes to find me. I heard some city by the point. I said, here I am. They turned that thing over. I tried to scramble on that jet ski and I rolled it back in. I made sure to hit the beach before I got off. So cousin don't get on the jet ski. Get on the glass bottle boat or something. Don't get on the jet ski. But my soul, that word when the bill may roll over my soul came to me. Okay, because all the songs Miller. that I have been placed in my heart my started coming to me. So it kept me calm, not panic. You know, a lot of times we die because we panic. That's right. But it kept me from panicking because I word have I hid in my heart. I was able to recite the scripture yeah. for the moment. And it kept me safe. Yeah. Rejoice and value God's word. Yeah. Place high value. Yeah. It is not simply another book. Yeah. It is not Plato, Socrates. It is not Tupac, it is not Biggie, it is not Drake, I can't stand Drake. Anyway, it is not Drake, it is not Kendrick Lamar, I know a few of them. I don't listen to them, I just watch BET. It is not them. They may say some good things every now and then. The Bible says good things all the time. Yeah. Oh. You can't find it till I go Kendrick Lamar because you know why? He nervous sometimes, he's scared sometimes, and life overwhelms him sometimes. Yeah. But if he turned to this, he can be pure, he can get pure and stay pure. Yes, Study and reflect and meditate on God's word. Sometimes I go out to the porch and just sit around and think about God. Sometimes get some quiet moments and go yes. out there and look up at yes. the stars in the sky. Because yes. creation That's it. speaks about the glory of God. Yes, it does. The stars wink at you, the moon smiles at you. Yes. The air feels good. Go out there and yeah. feel how God has moved in your life. See what God has done. Get away from the hustle and bustle. Amen. Your chairs in your backyard, your porch, your balcony, and think about the goodness of God. Amen.
Amen. Think about it. And don't forget God's word. He says right there. He says, I will delight in your statutes. Oh, yes. And I will not forget your word. Yes. The opposite of purity is impurity. Impurity is contamination. Don't you know when your body becomes contaminated, that's when you get sick? Yes. A flu virus is contamination. Yes, it is. Does that feel good? Mm -mm. Get the flu? No. Bacteria. You get a bacterial infection. Oh. That's contamination. Yes. That makes pure impure. Anything that's introduced that is not of God is impure. Yes. And it will contaminate you. Yes, it will. So there are three ways contamination happens. It's what we put in our minds, it's what we participate in or practice, and who we associate with. Three ways that contamination happens. I'm almost done. What we put into our minds, what we participate in or practice, mm -hmm. And who we associate with. Okay. If you want to be contaminated, hang with the wrong people, read the wrong oh, things, yes. and yes. practice yes. the wrong behavior. Yes. You're contaminated. You're contaminated. What you could do is you could be cleaned up. Yes. He can start you on your way all over again. Oh, the bless good thing about God is that He's merciful and His mercy endures forever. So even if you fall down and get contaminated, He'll pick you up, He'll clean you up, hey. He'll wash you with His word, He'll make you yes. Hallelujah. And you become a new creation. That's the good Hallelujah. thing about God. Yes. Philippians 4, 8, 9 says, and now, dear brothers and sisters, Hallelujah. one final thing. Hallelujah. Fix your thoughts on what is true. What's in your mind? Oh, yes. Fix, face, plan. <coughs> Meditate. Think about it. Don't be moved. Fix your thoughts on what is true. God's word is true. Let God be true. Yeah. And the world a lie. Every man, woman, right. boy, and girl that's out to him, let them be a liar. Let God be true. Yes, right. Uh, fix your minds on what is true. Wait till you get to preach in a minute. And honor. And right. Yeah. And pure. And love. And admirable. Listen to those terms. Those are all that's positive yeah. terms. Yeah. Fix your thoughts that's on things that are Uncle lovely, that are true, that are pure, that are admirable. Look around you and look at people who are living the right kind of life. Look at them and model them as they're following Christ. Don't think Beyonce. Beyonce can have all the churches she want to have. I ain't following Beyonce around the corner. You know why? Because she's going to die and she ain't going to rise again. Not for my sins. Jay-Z, I'm, I'm, I'm opposed to him anyway because his whole name, he's trying to call himself Jehovah. He's telling you he's God. Jehovah, J. That he's, he's, he's misrepresenting you singing this song, 99 Problems, and all the other songs he sings. No, he didn't want bad. He says he hold for Kanye West. Mm -hmm. He's telling you he's God, Jesus. He said he's Jesus. And you listening to that fool. I hope he's listening. Conway, you're a fool. If you think you're Jesus, you're a fool. I wouldn't follow you down the street. Matter of fact, Kim Kardashian got you all messed up. Mm -hmm. But if you fix your minds on what is true, and what is honorable, and what is pure, and what is lovely and admirable, think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Yes. Keep putting into practice all you've learned and received from unity. Yes. From Pastor Green, from Linda Sutherland, from Pastor K. Ron Braxton, from Pastor Rivers, from Sister Yolanda Rivers, from all of those that are teaching you. Put into practice what you've heard and learned yes. and saw them doing. And then he said, the God of peace will be with you. If you want to stay pure, maintain purity, get pure, follow what God says. Why is maintaining God's word and standards of purity important? <clears throat> First Timothy 4.12 says, don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. So now you have no excuse. You can say, my excuse is that I'm young. He says, uh, I'm working today. He said, don't let nobody despise you. You look down mm -hmm. on you because you're young. Mm -hmm. What you said here, don't let nobody look down on you. How you move and how you work in the church, don't let nobody mm -hmm. look down on you. It's all a growth process anyway. I don't know nobody who's a giant right now. Uh, God. Even as we move along, we all still growing That's and right. learning. That's right. All right. Don't let nobody put you down because you're young. Mm -hmm. He says, rejoice, all young men, in your strength. Yes. And all young women in your beauty. Rejoice, but remember one day you're going to be like me, old and fat. <laughs> you ain't going to stay looking all beautiful like you are now. You'll be beautiful, but not this kind of youth. <clears throat> but rejoice in your youth. Don't let anyone think less of you because you're young. Be an example. Somebody needs to know God. 
and they may only know God by how you live and how you behave. They want to see you out in the street. Sometimes I go, I ran into a, a young lady at Starbucks over here in Hamilton. And she goes to a church. And I walked up and I said, hey, how you doing? She said, good. I said, you're still being holy. Good. Among her friends, she was still well behaved. You never know who's watching. You. That's right. You never know whether they're old or young. They say, oh, that belongs to unity. That's so-and-so. That's so-and-so. That's Linda Sutherland's granddaughter. That's Jessica, uh, Jennifer's daughter. That's whoever. They know you because you have said something. And if you maintain your purity, somebody will know that they can remain pure. Right. They can get pure. They can pick up and get pure. Don't let somebody think less of you because you're young. Be an example of all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, in your faith, and in your purity. Oh, yeah. Nobody should look down on you. Matter of fact, we're going to exalt you because you're an example. You're a light in a dark world. The world is dark out there and they're looking for a way. They may say they know the way, but they don't. They're looking for somebody to show them the way. And it's up to you. To show somebody the way it's important for you to maintain because somebody's out there lost. They're trying to find some direction. In the final analysis, purity and righteousness involves a choice. Everything we do is a matter of choice. You can live for God, allow Him to clean you and keep you clean, or you can be contaminated by the destructive virus of the world. <clears throat> you can choose to believe the promises of God or choose to believe the Father of lies. You can choose to live or to die. Purity is worth it. You are worth it. He thought you were worth it. It's not easy to stand for God and his word, but it is worth it. I used to tell my kids this as they were growing up. Don't let somebody else place value on you. You need to know your own value. You need to know why you're valuable and that you're valuable and why you're valuable. I told an old story about the Rolex and the Timex. You know what a Timex is? So y'all, y'all young. A Timex was a cheap watch. Yes. Oh, you saw that. <laughs> Timex was a cheap watch, and you wore it. You could step on it. You could kick it. You could do whatever. It didn't have any value because you didn't pay much for it. That's right. Yeah. Okay. A Rolex, which is what I have on today, not showing sure off. Worth some money. Yes. This was a gift, by the way. It's worth some money. Yes. And it retains its value. Yes. I wore a specific today to tell you the story about the Timex and the Rolex. Yes. A Timex takes a lick and it still keeps on ticking. You can kick it, stomp it, beat it. Matter of fact, if you lost it, you wouldn't care. You can go get another one for $5. So you pick another Timex. Who cares? You lose a Rolex, you turn over the whole house. You might tear the house down trying to find a Rolex. It's worth ten thousand dollars, twelve thousand dollars, whatever it's worth. Don't try to rob me. I know y'all. It's worth some money. It's valuable. Yes. Okay. The type of Rolex people know the value because they put their name on the inside of it. They got jewels on the inside. They mark it in grave and saying this is a Rolex, and they'll look at it and they'll say it has value. Yes. You can be either a Rolex. Or timeless. If you don't know your value. If you don't know your value, you'd be a Rolex or time. If you know your value, if you know your Rolex, act like a Rolex. Tick like a Rolex. Be proud like a Rolex. Wear yourself proud. Shake your wrist like you got on a Rolex. Be happy in who you are. Don't let somebody place a different value on you. You don't think you're valuable? God thought you were valuable. Yes, he, did. he thought that you were worth saving. Yes, yes. You thought I was worth saving. Uh -huh. So you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. Yes, sir. So you cleaned me up inside. Uh -huh. You thought I was to die for. Yes. So you sacrificed your life. Yes. So I could be free. Yes. So I could be whole. Yes. So I could tell everyone I know. Hallelujah. Glory to God who changed my life. Yes. I will praise you forever. Yes, I will worship you forever. Yes. I will give you glory forever. Yes. I will give you glory forever. Why? Because you deserve it, Lord. Oh. I will praise you forever. Because you deserve it, Lord. Yes. Because I am free. Yes. Because I am whole. Oh. And I will tell everyone I know. He thought you were worth saving. Yes. So he came down through 42 generations. Yes. Yes. He came down all the way from Adam all the way down 
through Mary. And God placed him here because he thought you were worth it. So he came into the world as a baby. And he grew up so he could experience what you've experienced. He experienced hardship. He experienced rejection. He experienced people putting him down. He went to the temple and they said, how did he learn? What are you doing here? He's only 12 years old. He didn't let nobody despise his youth. He said, I've got to be about my father's business. Uh -huh. yeah. Then he moved to adulthood. He was submissive to his parents. He became a grown man. It was time for him to start his ministry. And at 30 years old, he started preaching. He goes and he gets baptized. The Spirit of God likes him saying, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Uh -huh. He knew that he came to die for you and for me. Oh, yes. He thought you were worth saving. Yes. He thought you were worth it. Yes. He came, he thought that you deserved love. When everybody else said you didn't deserve love, but you deserve punishment, he said you were worth it. Yes. So then all of a sudden, they arrest him. Mm. And God put on him the chastisement of the peace was up on him. And by his stripes we're here. Uh -huh. Oh, we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. But he laid upon him the strike that we deserve. He gave him your punishment because he thought you were worth saving. So he came. That you may be clean. That you may be whole. And that you need to tell everyone you know. So one day they took him to that cross. <laughs> That old rugged cross, they put it on him. Yeah. What you should have been carrying. Yes. They walked him up that hill. He couldn't carry it. He was so weakened from all the blows that he yes. took. They put on him this other brother named Simon of Niger. Like Niger's in Africa. Yeah. And they put on him and he helped him carry the cross up that yes, hill. He did. He's seeing where he's going. He knows where he's going. But he sees you and you and you and you at that cross. Yeah. He sees me. He sees him. He sees him. He sees her at that cross. He's walking up that hill. He's not seeing his own condition. He's looking at all of us yeah. at that cross. And he walks up that hill. Yeah. They nailed him to the cross. Yeah. They lift him high and they dropped him in that hole. Yeah. And he hung there. Yeah. And they made fun of him. They were really making fun of you. They really were cursing you. They really were gambling for your clothes. Yeah. He took your place. What? And he hung there from the, from the sixth to the ninth hour longer than that. But that's when it got dark. He hung there all day long. Yes, he did. And he watched everybody make fun of him. He saw his mama crying. He saw his friends crying. You think your friends turned on you as a best friend said he didn't even know it. He did that for you. He thought you were worth saving. And he hung there. And he hung there until he died. Yes. They didn't kill him. He just died because he was dying for you and me. Yes. Then they took him to a borrow too. I'm so glad it was borrowed. Oh, because if he had put a down payment on it, he wasn't coming back. Yes. When you borrow something, you give it back. And he laid him in a bottle too. And they put a rock over saying, now we won. Yeah. The devil thought he had won. He thought he had destroyed each and every one of you. But early Sunday morning. Hallelujah. Early Sunday morning, all he got right, all right. Before the hen laid her eggs. Yes. Oh, yes. Before the cock crow. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They rolled the stone away. Oh, and they looked in. They rolled the stone away so that you could see he was already gone. Uh -huh. He didn't need nobody help because he had grown all power yes, in heaven and earth. He thought that you were worth saving. Yes. So he came yes. into your life. Hallelujah. That you might be free. Yes. Oh, yes. That yes. you yes. might be whole. Yes. And that you might tell everyone, everyone you know, I know that you know a savior. Jesus. Yes. That you know a savior. Jesus. You need to make a decision. Hallelujah. There's a story about this Indian man I'm done. Some missionaries that went to India. Mm -hmm. And it was a staunch Hindu area. And the Hindus were uh, did not believe that Christ was God. But he heard the gospel. Mm -hmm. And he believed it. And they took him and his family. And they said, you got to turn around. Because if you don't say that you don't believe in Christ, if you don't, if you don't change your mind, I'm going to kill your children. Mm -hmm. And he said, I've decided. To follow Jesus. Mm. I have decided to follow Jesus. Mm. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. No turning back. So they killed his children. Oh, then they brought his wife to him. And say, we killed your kids. Now we're going to kill your wife. You need to change your mind. Look at all the pain and suffering he's going through. Holding on to the belief. Believing that God is true and every other person's alive. The culture was alive. The religious world was alive. And they put her in front of him to kill her. 
And he said, the world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. He's looking up. No turning back. No turning back. So they killed his wife. They said, now we're going to kill you. He said, well, though none go with me, <laughs> still will I follow. Though none go with me, still will I follow. Though none go with me, still will I follow. No turning back. No turning back. That man believed God. We haven't had to suffer like that, but you are going to suffer persecution in this world. They're going to make fun of you. They're going to laugh at you. They're going to say bad things about you. But you can be pure, you can maintain pure, and you can tell everyone you know that you was worth saving. Yes. May God bless you and keep you. Hallelujah, hallelujah.